Alright, in this video we're going to talk about something that's kind of obviously a big deal. It's the second fundamental theorem of calculus, and um, what it really covers is how do you find the derivative of an integral, so a function that has an integral within it, um, which has a variable bound. Um, so let's take a look at the integrals that we'll be dealing with, um, kind of in general. So we have the integral from a to x of f of t dt. So let's take a look at what's going on here. Um, first notice that the upper bound um, is the variable, um, and that's going to be a t value because the integrand is a function of t. So it's really important that the two variables be different. So um, if you are doing the integral from like 3 to t, then your inner function won't be a function of t. It'll be a function of maybe x or whatever. It doesn't really matter. Um, it's just that the inner function that is the integrand cannot have the same variable as the upper bound. Um, also, the upper bound should be the variable. Um, so if not, you're going to flip it and change the sign. Uh, we'll get an example where that happens. Uh, the lower bound will be a constant. So uh, that's also a t value, though. Um, and then this t, we call it dummy variable because we don't really care what it is. Uh, because in the process of taking the derivative, uh, we're going to change everything into a function of whatever the variable is in the upper bound. Uh, so it's not really that bad, uh, but it looks a little weird when you first see it. So here's uh, the idea. Let's let f prime of x be the derivative of f of x, which obviously uh, it is. And so we'll rewrite it. So we have the integral from a to x of f prime of t dt. And now I can integrate that, right? So that should be f of t from a to x. Fundamental theorem here. Uh, it gives me f of x minus f of a. But f of a, because a is a constant, is actually just a new constant, right? So that's just a number, which is important because now what I'm going to do is take the derivative of the integral from a to x of f prime of t dt, which should just be the derivative of f of x minus f of a, because the fundamental theorem told us that that was the anti the the antiderivative, right? Um, so now keeping in mind that f of a was a constant, when I take the derivative of the right hand side, I end up with this: the derivative with respect to x a to x f prime of t dt is f prime of x, um, which is great. So that's a very common way that you'll see that, where uh, the upper bound is just x. It's actually possible that the upper bound is a function of x, so let's call it g of x, and do the same thing, right? So if, the, if f prime of t is a derivative of f of t, then I can use the first fundamental theorem to say that this is f of t from a to g of x, which means it's f of g of x minus f of a. f of a is still a constant, but now when I take the derivative of this thing, I'm going to have to use the chain rule. So the derivative with respect to x, a to g of x, f prime of t dt, is going to be, so it's f prime of g of x times g prime of x by the chain rule. Um, so it's not so bad. But if you really take a look at this, what we're doing is we're taking the upper bound, we're plugging it into the integrand, right? So that gives us f prime of g of x, because I took the upper bound and plugged it in. And then I'm multiplying by the derivative of the upper bound. Um, and that's what you do every time. So let's take a look at uh, two examples and see how this really works. So if I want the derivative of the integral from 2 to x cubed of cosine of t squared, first thing I'm going to do, take the upper bound and plug it in. So it's the cosine of x cubed squared, so I plugged x cubed in, um, and now I have to multiply by the derivative of the upper bound, so this is going to be times 3x squared, and then usually what you want to do is rewrite it so it looks kind of normal, so we get that. And we'll look at one more, so here we have the derivative with respect to x, um, so this one's interesting, right, because the variable is on the bottom, so step one of this is to switch the bounds and change the sign, so this will be the derivative of the negative of the integral from negative pi to sine of x squared, uh, 1 over 1 plus t squared dt. Turns out we could actually integrate that, but we don't want to bother because we're just going to then find the derivative anyway. Um, so let's find the derivative. So it's the integrand with the upper bound plugged in. So we get that times the derivative of the upper bound, which is going to be uh, cosine of x squared, and then this is a composition, so I need the chain rule, so times 2x, and then you want to rewrite it so it doesn't look so messy. 
Um, so there you go. That's the second fundamental theorem and uh, two examples of how you use it. I hope you found this helpful and good luck.